This is in my 50s zone shade cloth area. So if I were to grow succulents in any parts of the world apart from the areas where you get snow basically so in tropical places and subtemperate places then I would recommend highly recommend using a shade cloth and growing them in the shade cloth until they're big enough and strong enough to put it out where there's not covered or out into my garden so this is what I do with my plants so any plants that you see in here are mostly mother plants it means I only have one or two of those plants and I'm still propagating them and I can't really put them all out there so I have to slowly acclimatize them but now it's time for me to water my garden and as a bonus this one we had rain three days ago and I haven't watered my anything so this one now uh, the babies this just came from inside and so they've been here for a while now they've been here for a couple of weeks but yet I, I'm still not putting them out into the full sun so they still stay in my 50 zone area and also sort of covered by all the shelves on top stack so you get the light coming through or the sunlight hitting them certain plants but the babies I try and avoid the babies so these are the babies although these ones are babies too but that one is already hardened because uh, I just put that there in about five days ago so before it was up here where it's sort of covered in this area here so there's different stages of acclimatization so this video is going to be mishmash now so this is the best videos I think because this is um, it's like an on the field guide there's no setup there's no trying to make it look pretty it is what it is basically so and if I find that I'm able to convey <laughs> my message better this way than when having a setup of say oh how to water your plants uh, take one bucket and two ml of syringe I can't do that you know this to me I'm sorry I'm not having a go at those people who do this but to me it's like my style is more of someone said this I am very matter of fact I like that word okay now I'm turning my tap on and we are going to okay I'm just checking if um, my what do you call this thing house <laughs> is working so this one crassula dubia that is well and truly overdue to be placed in my garden but it's still here so it's taking up space a lot of the plants in here I've got are ready to be put in the garden but not uh, the ionium kiwi they're not frost hardy at all minus four they're fine any colder they will suffer and I have tried for a few years now I've been trying to make them live make them strong and hardy but still no success they can only handle uh, minus six so far is the coldest I've exposed them to but it was place here in the 50 zone area 50 shade cloth area so now let's go and water my poor babies that's in desperate need of watering so the hang on I just moved this one okay this one's here they really all the babies they should really be drowned there you go because if you don't and then the big ones get watered too but doesn't matter they're fine see these are mostly babies in here now you see all of this uh, except that one but all of this oh that one so those two are not but the rest of them are oh except that one so I've got one two three four five that I haven't grown myself the rest I've grown from a leaf cutting or cutting so as you can see or the chop chop job so all the one that I beheaded are all here growing and okay that one is not that one is not so there's very few plants in there that I haven't grown myself but the rest I've grown myself from a leaf and when I say grown from a leaf that doesn't mean overnight 
takes a long time. Some of them are already over a year old and they're still small. So patience is what I find in growing succulents. So these ones, even though we had rain three days ago, they really didn't get that much watering. So I'm going to give them some watering. So I'm not fussy about the farina, like the white stuff on them. I don't really care because they're, they're, these ones are not show ponies. These are propagating ponies. <laughs> the show ponies, of course, I'm not going to... Ooh, the pudgy. I probably shouldn't have done that. I, I'm, I've overlooked you, but it doesn't matter. Pudgy, they don't really like water that much. So, but anyway, I've already watered her, so I might as well drown her. So there you go. This is how I water uh, my babies. Oh, that one too. Might as well. This is my friends I'm looking after. I'm plant sitting for a friend of mine. And this one haven't been watered since I got it. So I'm going to water that one. Oh, there you go. Oh, this one, my uh, Echeveria agavoides Martins hybrid is variegating on me. I don't know what's wrong with my plants. They're all variegating on me. But anyway, not all, but a lot of them. So this one, I'm going to touch it, touch it. That's still okay. The champagne. Ah, uh, who cares? Water them. Because if I'm not here, so they are going to go without water for a long time. But while I'm here, as much as possible, if they need watering, if they need water. So that's our priority for if they need. So I have to touch first to see if they need watering. If there's a bit of softness, yes, I can afford to have water. Even this Romeo here that uh, needs water. Okay, might as well water the lot. <laughs> I'm hopeless, I know. But just the way it is, we're going to have some hot days. It's warming up now. I don't know what the temperature is going to be doing in the next few days. But apparently it was supposed to be overcast. Well, yeah, in a way, we still got clouds. But see, a lot of blue skies as well. And yet they said it's going to be overcast. And my lavender pebbles, little cutie here, who's got lots of babies. Oh, look at that. Lots of babies. Can you, hang on, I'm just going to take my neck bracy thing, look at that. Oh, we're going to water her too. Now, did you have enough drink now? Okay. Sedum, Siboldii dragons, oh, that, that's thirsty. Oh, we just watered the whole lot. Who cares? They're not going to rot. Well, some will, but... <laughs> Most of them will survive. There you go. So, um, oh, look, my baby finger, Sidowski. And this one, uh, St. Louis Louis or St. Louis, uh, this, this got too big. Oh, that's got a mealybug. Do you have a mealybug? Um, it got too big because I've had it growing in the shade over there like most of my plants there that are in the shade They're all getting too big. So what I do when They're getting overcrowded or too big for the spot that they're in. I pull them out slowly like this one I just pulled this one out today Because my Jean Miatinho is overtaking the whole lot and of this lot here I've got my precious Van Keppel Thank you, Elki. I got this from Elki. And uh, it's growing really, really healthy, fat, but this is in the shade. So this is just my mother plant. The other one, I bought two from her. The other one I got from her is still in the same pot that I got it from. I haven't repotted it. And I'm sort of giving it a hard time a little bit, like exposing it a little bit out. This one is protected, but I want it to grow, so I need to remove... My Jinmi, my Chivria Jinmi Tenyao, but in the process also this brown rose, which I've grown from a leaf as well. So I have to remove them, but before I could even remove that, I could take them out, no problem, but then I have to acclimatize them, so which means they have to stay in this area here with these other ones being acclimatized. So I can't just put them out in the sun or else they're going to die. 
So slowly acclimatizing. So this is the process. So today they stay here and they're going to stay there for about a week until I see some color changes in them because they're actually pretty pale right now. So even this uh, Chivalia prolifica, so this is, I'm trying to grow these ones big, but it's uh, crowding my, my double-headed brown rose over here. So most of these plants I've grown from a leaf except that one of course which I bought so even this one I started with one leaf and then now another leaf and so the original plant original mother of this one hang on is that look how pretty that looks that is such a pretty chubby um, I don't even know your name I think it's called a sedum stali or sedum stali but I'm not sure because I was only given one leaf and the person who gave me the leaf didn't know the name. So, there you go. Anyway, uh, this is my seed grown Echeveria Lola. When I say seed grown, it actually came from a stalk that's been grown from seeds and looks nothing like the Echeveria Lola. This is sort of Echeveria Lola that got a little bit um, on... Uh, the bigger side so it's put on too much weight and this one now someone asked if I could do show me your Lola so this is my Echeveria Lola and then now this is my other Echeveria Lola so Lola so see the difference I don't know if you can see the difference but see this one is more pink see even the sides that is more pink than that one there. So, but this one now, you see the label Daranciana? Because I suspect this might not be a Lola. Although, when I bought it, it came with the tag or the label came as Lola. And so, I've done a bit of research and according to what I found online, uh, Echeveria and Oz, that there's two forms. There's one Lola and one is Derenciana. And you can easily mistake the two. But anyway, so now that one now, which was a Lola before, I'm calling a Derenciana and this one is now my Lola. And then the mother of this one is even more prettier. I also just noticed this one. This one is also uh, a leaf grown Lola from the mother of this Lola and they are actually the same except this one looks like it's variegated see that white line over there and monstros see look at that so and in the center of it I can see some strong variegation of yellow and green so hopefully and pink on the edges so hopefully this will variegate and Oh, look at that. It's so pretty. I don't know if you can see that. If you can see what I'm seeing, but anyway, see? So anyway, a lot of my plants is under observation. And so sometimes I have to be really, really careful when I'm giving away my plants because I do forget. And sometimes I give away something that I'm not supposed to <laughs> because I'm still studying them. This is all, uh, for me, this is learning, studying. I'm still learning about these plants because there's not much information about these plants. Say for example, uh, the genus itself, Echeveria, the Graptopetalum, so I'm talking about the leafy ones, the sedum, they're all so varied. Well, most of them, information you get are very generalized. What I find in growing these plants now is that they are very variety specific even so it can be an echeveria but certain types uh, of echeveria have different they all have different needs put it that way so it's very very difficult to just generalize and say across the board this is what a succulent need can't do that so anyway uh why am i wat watering my lithops there you go so <laughs> i've just accidentally watered my lithops but it doesn't matter we might as well water the whole lot, okay? Oh, this one's my crassula that I propagated. Uh, this is the first time I watered them. Although they already received some rain, still I'm watering them. And this one's here now. 
they desperately need some watering. Also one sign of uh, your plant needing watering is mealybugs. So once you see mealybugs, so you might want to check your plant, see if they needed some water, they needed a drink because plants do tell you what they need. There you go.